Welcome everyone to another video. Today is tip number six on how to increase privacy and security. And today's topic is encryption. And I've touched on encryption before in other videos, but today we're going to focus on three things. Number one, how to encrypt all of your devices. Number two, how to make sure your internet traffic is encrypted. And number three, how to encrypt all of your communications, including phone, text, and email. Now, a couple things before we get started, make sure that you understand that encryption is often only as strong as your password. And so make sure you're using strong passwords. And for more information on how to manage and create those passwords, please refer to tip number two. And additionally, if you're dealing with a device that is running slow, say it's an older computer or you're using a hard drive, please understand that if you go ahead and encrypt those devices, they may run even slower. So if you fall in that category, you may want to consider upgrading your device before you encrypt it. So to start off, let's talk about how to encrypt your Windows PC. So first thing you'll just want to do is click on the Windows Start menu, type in Control Panel and open it up. Look for System and Security and look for where it says BitLocker. Now, if you do not see BitLocker as an option, it means that you are not using a professional version of Windows, and I will give you a free alternative here in just a moment. But for those of you who have it, you can click on it, and it's really simple. You just click on the Turn On option. We'll walk you through the steps. Make sure that you do this when you're not using the computer because it will slow the computer down while it's encrypting. And so you may want to run this overnight or over a weekend when you're not using the computer. Now, a couple of reasons why people don't use BitLocker. Number one, it may not be available because they're using a home edition of Windows instead of a professional edition. And number two, some people feel that BitLocker is not the best security out there. I would argue it's better than nothing. And it is very easy to set up, but it is true there are better alternatives. Now, for those of you looking for a free alternative to encrypt your Windows PC, I'm going to post a link down in the notes down in the video description to this tutorial I made on how to use Veracrypt. Again, it's free and it does take a little more setup. It can look intimidating, but it's not difficult. Just follow this uh, guide, the step-by-step -step guide, and it will help walk you through the process of getting it set up. Additionally, Veracrypt does have additional options. You can not only use it to encrypt your entire computer, but you can also create encrypted spaces to store files or folders. And you can also make those encrypted spaces hidden. You can also use this to encrypt external drives such as flash drives or hard drives or just backups. So it's a very, very useful tool to use. Now, generally speaking, you use BitLocker and Veracrypt to encrypt your entire computer. But in addition to that, I will post a link here to AxeCrypt, which is a free program you can use to encrypt individual files. And so you can use this either by itself or use it on top of BitLocker or Veracrypt as an added layer of security. So all you do is download the program, set up a free account. Once it's set up, all you do is right click on the file, go down to AxeCrypt and then click on Encrypt. And then you can see that the program has been encrypted. And so again, this is just another added layer of security on top of full disk encryption from Veracrypt and BitLocker. Now here on Mac, it's really simple to enable full disk encryption. All we do is we click on the Apple icon in the top left and then go down to System Preferences. From here, just look for where it says Security and Privacy and click on it. And then go over to the File Vault option. And then you'll just want to click on the padlock to unlock it. Go ahead and type in your password. And at this point, you'll just need to click on the turn on option. Now for mobile devices, let's start with iOS. Apple iPhones and iPads by default will have full disk encryption enabled. You just have to make sure that you're using a strong password. I strongly recommend that you disable facial recognition, disable fingerprint scanners, and make sure you're not just using a four digit pin. At bare minimum, it should at least be six digits, but I recommend going even longer. Eight to 10 would be much better. I know it's a bit of a pain to type that in every time you need to unlock your phone, but at the end of the day, you need to decide what's more important to you, security or convenience. Now with Android devices, full encryption is not always enabled by default. And so what you will want to do is go into your settings and search for encryption. There should be an option where you can then enable it and then same rules apply as with iPhones to Android phones. You want to make sure that you disable any fingerprint scanners, facial recognition, and make sure you're using a pin that is at least six digits. But again, I strongly recommend that you go longer. Eight to 10 would be much better or even longer. 
And also make sure that when you enable this encryption that you have the phone plugged in and I would recommend that you run it overnight or over the weekend when you're not going to be using your phone. Now the next thing I want to talk to you about is how to make sure that your internet traffic is encrypted and secure. When you go to a website, if you look at the address bar in your browser, you should see a little padlock icon like this. If you click on it, it will let you know if your connection is secure or not. And this is very important because if you're on a website where you're ever typing in any information, and it can be anything, it could be a password, an email, credit card information, just any website that asks you to type something in, you always want to make sure that you are on a secure connection. Now here in 2020, most companies and websites do have secure versions of their websites, but not everyone. You will still find some companies that do not provide a secure version of their website for whatever reason. And most companies, if they have a secure version of their website, will automatically default to that version. But there are a few that still do not. And so there are extensions such as HTTPS Everywhere, which you can use to default to the secure version if there is one that exists. Again, it's completely up to the company or website to provide a secure version of their website. Now, any of you who follow my channel know that I'm not a huge fan of extensions or add-ons. And so an alternative to this, I would recommend switching to the Brave web browser, which is a free web browser you can use built around security and privacy. I will post a link to this browser where you can get it for free down below. But if I click on the little Brave icon right here, we can see that we have the equivalent of HTTPS everywhere right here where we can toggle it on or off. Again, this feature completely depends on if the company or website provides a secure version of their site. So even if I take this website and go to it here in Brave, You'll notice that even though we have this option turned on, we are still not secure because they do not provide a secure version of their website. So you just have to make sure that you're watching up here in the address bar. In addition, here in the Brave web browser, here in the menu, we have the option to use the Tor network, which is a useful tool to encrypt your web traffic. And this will help protect you against companies that spy on you and advertisers and whatnot. And so it is a very useful built-in tool that you can use for free. In addition, or as an alternative, you can also use a VPN. And I'm not going to dive deep into what a VPN is because I've already touched on that in another video. But in short, this is a great way to encrypt the traffic going to and from your computer to protect you against companies or advertisers that spy on you. And it also hides your IP address. Now, I'm just gonna give a couple quick recommendations. Molvad VPN is a great option. Proton VPN is also a great option. And if you're looking for a free solution, I usually don't recommend free solutions, but if you absolutely have zero money and need a free solution, Proton VPN does offer a free limited VPN solution that you can use if you need it. Last, we want to talk about how to encrypt your communications. And so as far as text and phone calls, there's a lot of different solutions out there. And at the end of the day, I recommend going with the solution that works best for you. But the one I would personally recommend that you go with is Signal. Again, it's free to use as end-to-end -end encryption. You can use it for phone calls, text messages. You can also send, you know, pictures and whatnot. Basically everything you would do normally in a, in a texting situation. And so this is a great option that I strongly recommend that you look into. It's available for iOS and Android. And then when it comes to email, the free option I recommend is ProtonMail. They do have paid versions with more options, but they also have a free version. And you can use this to send encrypted emails. You can even use it to send encrypted emails to someone who does not use ProtonMail. Uh, so that will still work. They will just need to have a password to view the email. But this is a great option. They do have end-to-end -end encryption available and a lot of other security and privacy features. So as far as getting your communications encrypted, these two would be my top recommendations. That's basically everything as far as how to encrypt your devices, your internet traffic, and your communications. And I do strongly recommend that you do that on all of your devices because if you're only encrypted on one device, but exposed or vulnerable on another device, it really doesn't do you that much good. Also keep in mind that even if you use all of these solutions, 
there is always a possibility that there is an exploit or some way to circumvent the encryption. So you always want to keep that in mind that there is always a possibility of someone still finding a way to get access to your information. That's everything for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, please go ahead and consider sharing it. And please also consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications on future videos.